you know, it's a game that, that I thought we played terrific defense to start the first 17 or 18 minutes of the game. Um, and I thought we expanded a lot of energy. And if it had been a high school game where the halves were 16 minutes, we'd been in great shape. Unfortunately, in college, they're 20 minutes. And we didn't finish uh, the first half like we'd wanted to. And so it created a little drama for us, and which is good. But but um, I think the addition of Posey gives us another body. Derek obviously has played terrific since he's come back the last three or four games. And, and our depth, I thought, was the key to the game tonight. And, and, uh, and then Posey makes an unbelievable play. If that doesn't make top ten tonight, then you, then you haven't done your job, Hunter. <laughs> Trust me. If that doesn't make ESPN top ten, I'm on you. We're pushing it. We're pushing it. Because that's, that's one of the greatest plays of the year to me. It was an unbelievable block. But uh, brought some energy and life in the old, you know, sawmill tonight. And, and uh, we, then he's you know, kind of back and forth a little bit. But we were, you know, led. I think the closest they got was maybe five. I don't know. Buckets, you know. I think it was, you know, they got it to three. They got it to three, but then, yeah. and, and then we just, you know, I, I felt, I never felt in danger tonight because I thought, even though I thought New Mexico State played as well as I'd seen them play, Kyle, you may be able to tell me different, but tonight, and they played in, conf, in league play this year. Would you agree with that, Kyle? Yeah, there was a little bit more energy, I guess. They were say. desperate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were desperate. And I thought our guys, Felt like they were desperate tonight, and I thought they battled back pretty well and, and handled a, a desperate situation pretty good. And, and and we're still trying to feel ourselves. You could you see some ins and outs with with you know Posey trying to figure out who he is, and we've seen Jalen play a lot better than what he did tonight. And and Rati Ware was good to see him make some shots and kind of the old Rati Ware at times. And I thought their defensive playing game plan was terrific. All their switching caused us problems and. We kind of figured it out at times, but not great. I did a poor job helping our guys execute offensively tonight. I got to help them. I got to do a better job with that. But I've, all in all, I hate them leaving the league because, for me, it's another team where I've always felt like we've been everybody's rival, but this could be a true rival for Stephen F. Austin. And I hate that, that they're leaving our league. Because don't you think, Trell? Yes, I know. Huh? Yeah, I know. And I hate that they're leaving the league because that would have been, a, a, to me, a, a true rival game besides Sam and Abilene and some of those teams that we play. That is kind of a rival game for us. Mm-hmm. Well, Latrell cementing a 3-0 and conference start with all of your threes that you shot tonight. Five of ten from the field. Also had, funny enough, three rebounds on top of that, a part of the 7 of 20 that SFA shot from deep overall. What were you seeing and... You keep everybody keeps on mentioning the the stacking, and it's been very consistent that your three point percentages have just kept on rising over these past few games. Talk about that a little bit. Um. Well, for tonight, I think tonight it was a lot. Uh, my teammates getting downhill. A lot of our game plan was to try to get in the paint a lot so they could collapse, and that's kind of what happened a lot. And they found me, and I, just, I had I, got, I was able to knock down a couple shots. So that, I think that was pretty nice about tonight, and um, I think keeping. On the question of keeping my percentage up, you know, we in the gym a lot, you know, Coach Havis in the gym a lot, and I think that definitely helps with that. With everybody, everybody has been really consistent with that. One of the big things that as the media, myself, and Coach always talk about specifically with you is how you've really grown into that leadership role, especially this specific season. Talk about that leadership style. Have you grown over these past few weeks with the challenges that have faced the team? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think it has grown over the past few weeks. I think it started in the summer. Um, we got a lot of new guys coming in, and um, a lot of people, they, they listen to me, they, they respect my voice, so I use that to my advantage to, just to get them to play the right way, do the right things. You know what I mean? Long, same with me. You know, I got to be the example, so I try to do the right things so they could do the right things. And um, just me being the voice, I try to just bring the energy every day and try to keep everybody up so we can keep playing at a high level. Hey, Coach, just talk about the energy and effort they play with on deep on the defensive side of the ball today. Yeah, I mean, we, we, that's, we've kind of not been great as we've gone through our in- injuries. We've just kind of had to kind of will ourselves to some wins and just kind of figure it out. But I think that's always been – our defense has always been the backbone of our program. Um, and I thought, you know, one of their players said, hey, y'all, they got some Bob Huggins-type defense out there. Call it whatever it is. We call it press you around here. Um, and I think our pressures, because of our getting some players back, we've been able to play with some intensity and, and kind of forcing teams not to run their offense. And it's, it's good to watch our guys enjoying playing defense. 
you know, we've had some five-on-five practices for the first time since, you know, really October, November, and that's going to make our defense better and our guys are taking pride in it. So it's, it's fun to watch. The only downside to it is, is uh, you know, our lack of defensive possession, defensive rebounding. And we get to win the possession, you have to finish with a defensive rebound. I think that kept them in the game, especially in the first half. Can you talk about how your defense leads to offense? Yeah, I mean, that's – you know, we like playing in transition, and we had those opportunities tonight. I think we, the game should have been a 20-point game, I thought, in the first half if we'd finished some, you know, transition points um, and some layups and some different things. And, and and even in the second half, I thought we missed some bunnies, some opportunities to really just blow the game open. And, you know, defense for us always leads to our offense. That's our best offensive player. Our guys want to play fast. We want to play fast. It's the press you moniker that we, we our guys enjoy. And uh, – so I think it's a fun way to play. Our guys enjoy playing that way. They enjoy playing, you know, Latrell. I got on Latrell's butt the first possession of the game because he let his man catch. And, and uh, But they ran some team's game plan to play against us. So they run stuff we've never seen before. And it's I enjoy that. I think we win when teams game plan to run different things against us because they're not running their offense. Mm-hmm. Can you just talk about how y'all are, you know, locking in on defense and turning that into offense? Uh, yeah, we um... – in practice, we do a lot of transition drills to try to get better on the defensive end and offensive end. I feel like we're really good in transition. We got some high flyers. We got some really good shooters. So it's like, to me, it's like pick your poison. If you take the rim, we're kicking it out. If you take that, we're throwing up to the rim. So I, I feel like defense, when we turn them up like that, they make plays they don't usually make. They just really hand the ball to us when we just go the other way with it. Was there an emphasis in the halftime locker room about rebounding, considering how many offensive fours they had in the first half? Let me answer that one. <laughs> you probably can't say what I said. <laughs> God, God rest my mom's soul. Huh? Let me <laughs> nah, we just it was, it was emphasized a lot, a lot. You know, what I mean, we knew that was gonna be the biggest thing coming into this game, and um, we just got to get better at that part of our game so we can continue to stack these games on top of each other and keep winning. Let's just say, you know, my mom's looking down from heaven. And I told a couple of our guys that they had as many rebounds as my mother did. How about that? <laughs> Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement. And, I, and, and nobody loves my mom more than she uh, – trust me, my mom's up there yelling at our guys too. <laughs> she was my biggest fan. So I think it took you guys off guard when I made that statement. Is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> but it lightened the mood a little bit in the room, did it not? It did. It did. So I was pretty angry with our defensive <laughs> board play effort because I thought we did a decent job rebound, boxing out. I just didn't think we had the aggression to go get it, right, Buckets? Like, you, you know – you you got 230 yards. Are you going to lay up or are you going to freaking go go after it with your three wood, right? You guys actually all scored them in second chance points for the first. Yeah, but still, that doesn't give us a chance to run, though, right? And that's what I think we're best at. Got Latrell. Everybody guards Latrell so tough. And for him to get shots, you know, he's not 6'5 and can just, you know, guy didn't make him 6'5. He needs space to get shots. And it's either off an offensive rebound a lot or some penetration or in transition. And that's when he's at his best, we're at our best. And, and we got to get, you know, one of those two. And they were switching to not create an opportunity for us, for him to get a shot, which is smart. Greg mm-hmm. does a great – he's a great coach. I mean, he's been around great coaches. He's a phenomenal coach. He had a great defensive game plan to attack the way we run offense. We were just talking about it after the game. And, and uh, so limited how many touches our guys had to get shots up. And so, you know, because we're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league, nobody think, in the country. Nobody thinks that. But our percentages are top 15, top 10, whatever. They were six a couple of weeks ago in the country. And uh, they took those away from us that we normally get. And it's, I think it's frustrating for him and some of the other guys on our team. It was, yeah. Coach, you guys have struggled at times this season with turnovers. It's something that's yeah. gotten better uh, in the past few games, only eight turnovers tonight. Do you think being shorthanded and, and just fatigue was part of that yeah. problem? Or Bucket, that's a great point. Care of For a golfer, you're really, really good at <laughs> figuring out stuff, right? Um, so they don't call them buckets for nothing. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I hope so, you know. But I think, you know, I told Trell he had three of our eight tonight. You know, for a guy who I'd rather him just. I think his best deal is to shoot it, right? We've all seen Trell just. I mean, I'm begging him to shoot it. He's got Muhammad on him at 40 feet, and, and I, if Muhammad's away from the basket. We can go rebound it if he just shoots it. You know, and he beats him off penetration. The defense collapses, and, mm-hmm. and uh, but I'd rather him just because that's a shot for him. I mean, we saw him make 40 foot shots tonight, right? And he's got unlimited range, and uh, 
but yeah, I mean, I think when you're when you're not fatigued, you make better decisions, you know, and and um, you know that's why late in the round birdies are impressive, right? And because you're not tired, your legs aren't tired, you can think right. Where do you hit it on the golf, on the on the green and all those kind of things? Same thing out here. I mean, I thought in the first half we were terrific against their press, their half court trap. We got exactly where we wanted to get it. The second half we weren't nearly as good against their half-court trap and executing that. Now you would agree with that. Because we had layups in the first half against their half-court trap. We did perfect execution. Really proud of our guys. And, and in the second half, they went to it. It caused us to get out of whack. We scored one time against it, but we didn't execute. We didn't get layups. And because I think when people press you, you should get a layup because you're going to get two on the ball. And uh, but I think our depth, I mean, guys, we're getting better. We went, what, seven out of eight or something like that now, and, and we're getting better. I mean, this team, I said this, and Kyle, I think I told you, I, this team I think can be better than our team that went 28-3. and three. We're not there. It's gonna, February is going to be when I think we got a chance to be good. We're, but we're not there yet. If we stay healthy, if our minds stay right, if we stay unselfish, but we're not there yet. I think this team could be unbelievably de- great defensively. And you saw it in the first 17 minutes of the game tonight, you know, and, and offense – you, you know, Mark asked earlier, I mean, our defense should lead to our offense. And we got enough good offensive players, good enough shooters, and uh, and we get our big center back. I think we got a chance to be really good. Talk about Derek briefly. Um, one of the most underrated Jeez. stats, a 20 or plus 20 in the plus minus category, six points and uh, six rebounds. I mean, Derek Tizano, I think I said it right for once. Isn't that right, Tizano? Is that Tizano, the right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, finally. My wife will get not get on me, but he's unbelievable. His just his energy at six four and just trying hard and just cares and, and just multiple efforts and, and you know, he's got a meniscus issue in his knee and is playing with that Jones fracture. We thought he was gonna have two surgeries again a month ago and his body came to me after Christmas. He's like, Coach man, it just hurts. My I wake up every morning, I just I don't feel like I can go, but I'm going to give the team everything I got, and, and he does. And he, he does everything we ask him to do, right? He's got a okay. smile on his fi- face, and um, just that we run absolutely zero plays for him. And I thought he had a phenomenal offensive rebound the first half that gave us energy, made a couple big defensive plays, and, and uh, he is a true lumberjack. Um, just does everything we ask him to do, and just the heart and soul. Terrell is our, our spirit and our heart. And, and does it lifts everybody up, and everybody looks to him. And, and Derek embodies what it is to play in this program. Just doesn't care, brings his hard head every day, and just just try. So I, I, it's really cool to watch a guy who couldn't get all, get in the game, you know, 12 months ago, and played great the last 10 games. Wouldn't have won the league without him, and, and watch him kind of flourish. Had to change positions because of injuries, and um, it's fun to watch, you know, because he cares. Great student, like Latrell, great student. And, uh, just fun, fun. As a coach, man, you root for guys like him. Anything you two would like to say to Jack Nation entering Saturday versus Grand Canyon? Troll? Um, I would say expect the same result tonight. I, I thought we had a, a we had some good students there tonight. We appreciate the students. Um, you know, this is our Saturday. Be, we're going to go about six weeks almost without playing at home, except for two games. And this team's hot right now. They, I think they deserve everybody that is around this area that wants to watch a, one of the hottest teams in college basketball needs to show up Saturday afternoon to watch two really good teams play. And these kids deserve you guys to, to show up Saturday afternoon. They played really well and battled a lot of adversity this year. And we surely hope that we can fill this place up on Saturday afternoon like the old times. They deserve it because they played their fannies off for Stephen F. Austin. SFA continues whack play three and zero undefeated, looking to continue to show the league that they are players and not pretenders. Congratulations, guys! Axum. Axum, Hunter.